Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neeraj and today I am going to discuss about the production of abiotic stress resistance plants. So without any delay, let's start the video. So first of all, what is abiotic stress? So there are two types of stress, the biotic and abiotic. So as we know, biotic stand for something living and abiotic stand for non-living. So when the stress is due to the non-living factors, so this stress or this damage is known as abiotic stress. So this abiotic stress may be due to heat, water and salt stress. So the types of abiotic stress is, so the abiotic stress, it may be due to temperature, due to the rise of temperature or due to decrease in temperature, that is thermal stress. So when there is a decrease in temperature, that stress is known as cold stress and due to this cold stress there is a formation of ice crystals which ultimately inhibit the photosynthesis and metabolism and there is also the production of reactive oxygen species so this cold stress it can be freezing or chilling stress then second heat stress which is due to the increase in temperature and this heat stress it leads to the water evaporation and ultimately decrease the seed germination and photosynthesis efficiency. Second type of abiotic stress include water stress means when there is either the increase or decrease in the amount of water. So first condition is drought. So this is due to the you can say when the water is very low. So as the water level decreases so there will be the cell dehydration inhibition of photosynthesis and metabolism. So this condition is known as drought. The second type of water stress is flooding when there is an excess of water. So due to the excess of water, there is an absence of oxygen to the plants because the water it loses into the roots of plants due to this flooding. So ultimately there will be the decrease. You can say decrease penetration of oxygen to the roots. So which ultimately reduce the respiration. The third kind of stress that is salt stress. So this salt stress is due to the excessive amount of salts in the soil. And this salt stress, it lead to the iron cytotoxicity, cell dehydration, inhibition of photosynthesis and metabolism. Now, how the plant, they tolerate the osmotic stress or the abiotic stress. So whenever a plant is subjected to some osmotic stress, they itself produce certain compounds and which are called as osmoprotectants or osmolites. These osmoprotectants, these are certain compounds which protect the plants from these abiotic stress. So the plants, they themselves made these compounds or osmoprotectants to protect themselves whenever they are in the abiotic stress. So these osmoprotectant or osmolites, they include like carbohydrate, for example, sucrose, tree halos, fructans, then sugars, they include sugar alcohols like sorbitol, mannitol, pinitol, etc. And amino acid, which is a proline and glycine betaine. So these are the certain example of these osmoprotectants, which are produced inside the cells under natural conditions, means we are not making them they are the plants are making themselves to tolerate the abiotic stress. Now, as I told you, we are going for the production of plants which are resistance to abiotic stress and the production is through transgenesis. So here, first of all, you have to know that what is transgenesis. So, so transgenesis is a, you can say it is a process of transferring foreign gene into the plants and this foreign gene is known as transgene while the plant which carry the foreign gene is known as transgenic plants. Now these are the strategies which are used to develop the abiotic stress resistance plant means how we can develop the plants which are very much resistant to these abiotic stresses. So first strategy include that is engineering of genes for osmolite biosynthesis. So as I told, the plants, they naturally make some osmolites or osmoprotectants to defend against these abiotic stress. So if we can increase the 
production of these osmolites inside the plants by introducing the genes for these osmolites so ultimately we can protect the plant from these abiotic stresses like in second strategy that is we can also transfer the genes which code the enzymes which ultimately squeeze the active oxygen the third strategy include the transfer of genes or engineering of genes that encode lea le proteins that is late embryogenesis abundance proteins and fourth strategy the genetic engineering of molecular chaperones and fifth one is the genetic engineering of cell membranes now let's discuss all these strategies in detail along with some examples so first strategy is engineering genes for osmolites biosynthesis so as i told we can increase the level of these osmolites by transferring genes for their biosynthesis so these osmolites for example i told that they include proline glycine betaine which are naturally produced inside the plant but by transgenesis we can increase their production secondly sugars like sucrose free halose fructones and sugar alcohols like sorbitol mannitol and onitol etc so these are the osmolite which are just told earlier now these osmolites these are you can say these are uniformly neutral with respect to the cellular functions so the first strategy it include the increased biosynthesis of these osmolites by introducing genes so first we take the example of proline so proline is an you can say it is a amino acid and it accumulate inside the plant under the drought and salinity conditions and if we increase the production of this proline so we can protect our plant from this abiotic stress and for increasing the production we must identify the specific gene or specific enzyme which is required for its production so this enzyme is pyrrolin 5 carboxylase synthetase p5 cs enzyme which is very much important enzyme in the synthesis of this proline and what we do we just isolate the gene of this p5 cs enzyme and introduce into our plants as a result our plant is now making you can say many more proline and ultimately protect itself from the abiotic stress so for example here the transgenic tobacco plant which was generated with this p5 cs enzyme gene and it shows the enhanced you can say enhanced expression of this proline 10 to 18 fold and as a result due to the increase in the proline concentration this proline concentration so that plant was you can say it was resistance to the salt and drought conditions second glycine betaine which is also one of the osmolite so this glycine betaine it also accumulate inside the plants whenever there is a various abiotic stress like drought salinity and freezing so by increasing the biosynthesis of this glycine betaine we can also make the plant resistance to these abiotic stresses so how we can do this for this we have to identify these key enzymes which are required in the synthesis of glycine betaine so these enzymes are choline monooxygenase enzyme and betaine aldehyde dehydrogenase enzymes so if we transfer these enzymes so we can ultimately increase the production of this glycine betaine so for example by using this choline oxidase gene from the arthrobacter the transgenic rice was developed and this rice was resistance against the abiotic stress similarly another example include that is transgenic tobacco in which this betaine aldehyde gene was taken from arabidopsis and transfer to this tobacco plant they show increase salt resistance next sugars and sugar alcohol so again they include like mannitol pinitol etc so we can also increase their productions by inserting the genes required for their biosynthesis so for example in case of manno mannitol if we want to uh, increase the production of mannitols so for that case we have to transfer the gene which is required for its biosynthesis and this gene is mtld gene that is mannitol 1 phosphate dehydrogenase 
gene. This gene it converts fructose six phosphate to the mannitol one phosphate phosphate which ultimately synthesizes the mannitol. So, for example, the transgenic tobacco it was engineered with this MTL1 gene and it shows the you can say again the salt stress the resistance against the salt stress. Second, fructans. So, fructans they also serve as the main storage of carbohydrate in many plant. They protect against the drought and cold stress. So, in case of fructans, the tobacco plants in which the fructosyl transferase gene was inserted. So, they increase the production of fructans and ultimately they were resistant to the drought stress conditions. Now the second strategy by which we can develop the transgenic plant which are resistance against these abiotic stresses. So that is the engineering of genes encoding enzymes for sequencing active oxygens. So whenever there is a you can say abiotic stress there is increased production of active oxygen species like hydrogen peroxide hydroxyl ions and these active or you can say these reactive oxygens they ultimately damage the various biomolecules. So, in order to protect the cells from these reactive oxygen, we have to detoxify them. So, for that there are certain enzymes are involved like superoxide dismutase, catalase, etc. So, for an example, the transgenic alfalfa plant which was, uh, you can say, which was overproducing this superoxide dismutase gene. So, it shows the very reduce injury from the water stress. So, this superoxide dismutase, it catalyzes the dismutation of superoxide to hydrogen peroxide and molecular oxygen. Similarly, another example include the overexpression of glutathione as transferase or glutathione peroxidase. So, these enzymes, they also provide protection against cold and salt stress. So, by introducing the genes of these antioxidant enzymes, we can make our plant resistance to some abiotic stresses. The third strategy is the engineering of Lee protein. So, here the Lee protein stands for the late embryogenesis abundance proteins which are generally accumulate whenever there is a stress. So, we can also, you can say, in, uh, introduce the genes of these Lee proteins and ultimately improve our plant. So, for example, here include the rice plant which was transformed with the barley Lee gene HVA1. So, when the rice was transformed with this HVA1 gene, so that rice plant show increased resistance against the water stress and the salt stress. The next strategy is the engineering of molecular chaperone genes. So, the chaperones are the proteins which help in the correct folding of proteins. And whenever there is a stress to the plant, so there is difficulty in the proper folding. So these proteins, they help in the proper folding of proteins. So if we introduce the genes of these proteins, so ultimately we can protect our plants from the abiotic stress. So for example, here when the carrot crop was inserted with the gene of this HSP 17.7 gene, that is heat shock, protein which was driven with the CAMV 35S promoter. So, these carrot cell lines, they show increased thermo tolerance. So, by this we can say that these molecular chaperones, they also helps in the protection against this abiotic stresses. The next strategy is engineering of cell membranes. What it means that these cell membranes, they are the critical sites of injury during chilling, freezing and thermal stress. And if we increase the level of unsaturated fatty acid in the, you can say these lipids in the membranes, which ultimately improve their chilling tolerance. So by this, when the tobacco plants, they were introduced with a gene for enzyme that is acyl glycerol phosphate acetyl transferase. So in that case, these plants, they acquire tolerance from the chilling stress. And this gene was taken from the Arabidopsis Thaliana. So, by these strategies, we can develop the abiotic stress resistance plants. So, that's all for today, guys. See you in the next video. Till then, thank you very much.